Tucker Carlson showed up in Moscow this week to interview Vladimir Putin. It turned out to be anything but an interview. Putin droned on for two hours and seven minutes, while Tucker sat there like an eager puppy. Occasionally, but rarely, he got in a question, like this one about the power of the deep state in Washington. It sounds like you're describing a system that's not run by the people who are elected in your telling. That's right. That's right. But more telling than what Tucker asked is what he didn't ask. Nothing about why Putin invaded a sovereign country. Nothing about targeting civilians. Nothing about Russian war crimes. A reporter can ask Putin a tough question if he wants a real interview. Why is it that so many of the people that oppose Vladimir Putin end up dead or close to it? But apparently, that's not why Tucker went to Moscow. During the Cold War, gullible Westerners who spread Soviet propaganda were dismissed as useful idiots. But calling Tucker that is unfair to useful idiots. No, he's made a cynical decision to chase MAGA's affection for dictators. And what better way to cash in than Putin's Kremlin? Now, you might have seen Tucker Carlson's big, hard-hitting interview with Vladimir Putin, which was definitely not right-wing Russian propaganda, as evidenced by statements like this. We ourselves have put in a request for an interview with Zelensky, and we hope he accepts. But the interviews he's already done in the United States are not traditional interviews. They are fawning pep sessions, specifically designed to amplify Zelensky's demand that the U.S. enter more deeply into a war in Eastern Europe and pay for it. That is not journalism. It is government propaganda, propaganda of the ugliest kind, the kind that kills people. At the same time, our politicians and media outlets have been doing this, promoting a foreign leader like he's a new consumer brand. Not a single Western journalist has bothered to interview the president of the other country involved in this conflict, Vladimir Putin. Most Americans have no idea why Putin invaded Ukraine or what his goals are now. They've never heard his voice. That's wrong. Right. Most Americans have no idea why Putin launched his invasion into Ukraine. Not like he's been broadcasting his desire to take back territory that was lost during the fall of the Soviet Union for years. Not like he's already tried to annex Crimea and Georgia and most recently announced the annexation of four regions in Ukraine, which Putin himself said would be, quote, Russian forever. But sure, we can't possibly figure out why he launched this war. And one more point on Tucker, thank God we have someone like him to call out those in the media who lie in service of the government. That's right, without totally independent, impartial Tucker Carlson, who would be there to call out all of the partisan hacks who advocate openly for one political party over the other? At least someone out there is willing to keep the government honest. But also, think about why Tucker Carlson and the rest of the right-wing ecosystem love Vladimir Putin and Russia. The answer is that they are aligned. Trump and Republicans support Russia because Russia is content to meddle on their behalf, just like they did in 2016. And while Donald Trump loves to rewrite history and yell no collusion all day, just remember that the Russia investigation resulted in 34 people and three Russian businesses indicted, as well as seven guilty pleas. And because Republicans are solely interested in power, and yes, that very much includes Tucker Carlson, then they welcome the support from the Kremlin and are happy to reciprocate. And in terms of what Putin gets out of the deal, Russia wants Trump in power because Trump will help undermine NATO, which is the biggest impediment to Russian expansion and imperialism. Trump today expressed his desire to do exactly that. One of the presidents of a big country stood up and said, well, sir, uh, if we don't pay and we're attacked by Russia, Will you protect us? I said, you didn't pay? You're delinquent? He said, yes, let's say that happened. No, I would not protect you. In fact, I would encourage them to do whatever the hell they want. You gotta pay. Again, a mutually beneficial relationship. Putin helps the Republicans electorally, who will then take power and push us away from NATO, which will allow Putin to expand his empire. Putin found a useful idiot in Trump, and he'll be damned if he's not gonna do everything he can to help him, which means getting Republicans in power. Again, a mutually beneficial relationship with a bunch of autocratic egomaniacs at the center. In terms of what Tucker stands to gain, Chris Wallace 
Morales noted it perfectly. He is cashing in off of MAGA's affection for dictators. Look, it's already clear that there's a love affair between Trump and Putin, the reasons for which I just laid out. And so because the cult leader says that Putin is good, then the rest of his cult blindly follows along. And so knowing that Putin's stock is rising within the cult that is the Republican base, Tucker is simply jumping on the bandwagon and meeting the Republicans where they are. Remember, right-wing media doesn't influence the base, the base influences them. During Trump's election theft claims of 2020, Fox News, for example, knew that it had to repeat those claims or risk losing audience share to Newsmax. They won't report the truth, but they report what the base is desperate to hear. It is the tail wagging the dog. Plus, of course, the other side of that, Republicans love Putin because he's an autocrat. Trump has spent years fawning over Kim Jong-un and Duterte and Erdogan and Bolsonaro and any other right-wing autocrat who catches his eye. There is nothing more the right in general loves more than the appearance of a strongman. For a bunch of self-proclaimed alphas, they spend an awful lot of time demanding that a tough man rule them. These people have nothing more than to be under the thumb of a powerful man, and that's exactly what they got from Donald Trump. And by the way, don't take my word for it, take Trump's. It was him who demanded that a president should be able to do whatever he wants with impunity. He is arguing right now in court that a president should be able to commit crimes and not face any prosecution. Well, I can say presidential immunity, which we'll be talking about because that will be upcoming, is very, very important for a president to have. If a president doesn't have immunity, he really doesn't have a presidency. Uh, he can be, uh, he can be told to do things that he would never do. He can do really bad things for our country. Presidential immunity is imperative. It's going to be very, very important. And I'd rather talk about that next week. But there is nothing more important to a presidency than immunity because they have to be free to make decisions without saying, oh, if I do this or if I do that, as soon as I get out of office, we're going to be indicted, we're going to have trouble. And the other party will do that. I think we've seen that. They've done that. There's some very bad people. And you have an opposition party, and they will do things that are very bad. If you don't have immunity, you can be blackmailed. You can be, as a president, they'll say, if you don't do this, this, and this, we're going to indict you as soon as you leave office. You cannot allow a president to be out there without immunity. They don't have immunity. You don't have a presidency. You lose all, excuse me, you lose all, you lose all form of, of free thought and good thought. And it's worth noting, by the way, that presidents already have immunity from civil litigation. You can't sue a president for policies you don't like, for example. It's just criminal violations that a president can be prosecuted for. If your argument is that a president needs to commit felonies while in office to be able to effectively govern, you might have just lost the plot. So good on Chris Wallace for calling Tucker out for doing what he and so many others in the right-wing media ecosystem have made a living doing, clinging on to the dictatorial tendencies of Donald Trump and cashing in for relevance. These people are a bunch of barnacles attaching themselves to a sinking ship, and we should do whatever we can to make sure that it sinks even faster. Before you go, I need some help. Please subscribe to the channel and do your part to help grow the progressive media ecosystem. I don't do sponsorships or paid ads, I won't ask for money, but just subscribing to this channel goes a really long way and it helps get the message out to more people. The subscribe button is right here on the screen. You can also subscribe to my Spanish language channel, which I made to reach those crucial Spanish speaking voters. That link is on the screen too. And finally, if you want to listen to my audio podcast, you can follow that link as well. Thanks so much for watching.